Hey guys, welcome to The Awakening. And I think today is 120. Um, today, I'm going to do a program for all my friends out there um, that watched that debacle last night. I sat up um, from one eight, I sat up all night watching and seeing what was going on. And I thought, I woke up today and I just couldn't function. I don't know about you, the fear, the nausea, the butterflies everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And I, I don't know about you, but just absolutely packed with fear. Fear, fear, fear everywhere. Everything was in my face. Everything was everywhere. And I didn't know what to do. So I thought, okay, well, I will get up and I will do what I do. I will do an awakening and I will try to help as much as I can. Not just myself, but lots of people. Because if you're feeling like that, if you're feeling scared and disappointed and let down and confused and where suddenly it's in your face, how corrupt and how sick you know, we're, we're working on highlighting this all the time. You know, the Patriots and Q and everyone who's doing this work and channeling and psychics and, you know. And um, it was really interesting when I did the reading yesterday and I wasn't getting the answers, but I did see that a lot of the good things were upside down. And so it was like stalling, you know, saying to us, you need to have patience and you need to trust. And that's it. Now, the fear will be everywhere. The fear is everywhere. So feel it. Let's feel the fear of what we're watching here. We're watching here your world disintegrate in such a way where you don't even have a right to vote anymore for the person that you want. That's what we're watching. We're watching your world being taken over by something that is so evil and so doesn't care about you or me or anyone except themselves. And they love this fear. They love it because it feeds into what they want. Love is the opposite of fear. And the Course in Miracles today, if I quote the Course in Miracles, okay, because I don't actually know very much what I'm going to say, I'm going to quote a Course in Miracles. I will not fear to look within today. Within me is eternal innocence because it is God's will that it be there forever and forever. I, his son or daughter, whose will is limitless, as is his own, can will no change in this. For to deny my father's will is to deny my own. To look within is but to find my will as God's love created it and as it is. I fear to look within because I think I made another will that is not true and made it real. Yet it has no effect. Within me is the holiness of love. Within me is the memory of him. The step one I take today. My father is my sure release from idle dreams of sin. Your altar stands serene and undefiled. It is a holy altar to myself. And there I find my true identity. There I find my true identity. Okay. And what is the second coming? Well, we're living it. It's the Christ within each and every one of us, okay? It is within every one of us, each and every one of us, to look within and to see the will of love, okay? The will of love today, I will look within. I will look within. I will not fear to look within today. It's about sitting with the fear. It's about feeling the fear. 
Course in Miracles is very powerful. All of these spiritual practices are very powerful. If you can just see that this is just a blip in the matrix. Where is the fear? With me, it's in my shoulders and my neck and my gut and my core, and I don't want to eat and I don't want to face anything. And it comes at you, you know, like in waves, doesn't it? And the uncertainty and the fear and the panic, and it just comes at you. So your job today, your job today is to just say, okay, this is not God's will for it, love's will for me. This is not God's will for me. Okay, I can stay in the moment. You can stay in the moment. It's learning again to stay in the moment because at this moment, we're okay. At this moment, you're okay. In this moment, you're okay. You know, flick the elastic band and bring yourself back into this moment. In this moment, you are okay. Okay? In this moment, have you got food? If you don't, then contact me. I did say this. If you don't have food, contact me. Have you got water? Have you got breath in your body? Have you got the wisdom to try to understand and the intuition to understand that this is actually all leading towards salvation? Yeah, you have to bring up all the rubbish. Is that what's happening here? Is it another perception of looking at things? I'm scared that today I'm going to fall out with everybody that doesn't see beyond. Everyone that could not see what was going on. Everybody that could not see the truth and still can't see the truth. I already had um, a fallout with my ex-husband. I already had a fallout with him because he couldn't see the progression. I said to him, do you not see now? Do you not see what they're trying, what this element is trying to do to you? Do you not understand? This has never ever happened before. This is not freedom. You have to do what you're told by this law. But he just doesn't see it. So he doesn't see it. I see beyond. And those of, those of us that work been working on the truth now for years and years and years, we see beyond. And it's really scary to be around these people that do not see what's happening to their freedom. And we know, and that's why we've been given this job. But today, all I can do is come on here. And, you know, I feel like a child and that's why I'm doing this. I, I, I can come on here and I can talk to you about what fear is. Because remember I said, I was going to show you what the ego does. And today I am in fear. But as I'm talking to you, <coughs> As I'm breathing, as I'm staying in the moment and I'm connecting to the fear of the little child that is uncertain, that is confused, that would hear sirens and had to run down to the air raid shelter and didn't know if she was going to see her father again because that's how I live. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm coming to you from that point of view. That's what the fear is. It's coming from the past and it's coming from the future. Fear comes from the past and comes from the future. Regret is the past and the future is lack of certainty. I didn't want to do this. <coughs> I didn't want to come on here today. I didn't want to. I didn't think I could come in here today, but I am a servant of love. I am an angel of God. 
And it's my job to not let you lose your hope. Like my name, Lauren Hope. So what my gut is telling me, and if I listen to my intuition and my gut, um, is that this is all part of the plan. And they need to get everything out there. It, it, we're detoxifying, guys. When you're detoxifying, it's the most painful thing your body can go through. You get a fever. What happens when you have a boil? I'm channeling this for me and for you. When you have a boil, when you have poison, the poison has got to come up to the surface, hasn't it? How can you heal if the poison doesn't come up to the surface? Hmm? The poison comes up to the surface in order for the poison, the crap, to come out of it. Yes? Everything is acting, it feels like this something is acting like a catalyst to bring all this poison up. Do you understand? And we were watching it last night. And, and at some point, the poison will be so strong, you're getting what I'm saying, the boil will be so big as it's getting that people will not be able to go back into their caves and their shells and pretend that they can't see the truth. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think that that's what this is. And it's been more or less confirmed by an Intel friend of mine that says it's all part of the plan. We should have realized that this is part of the plan. And, but, you know, but the ego, the human is terrified. The human is terrified. The human is fighting. The human will fight. The human part of me is like this. Is this how you're feeling? So, let, so let's feel it then. Let's feel it together. Okay, bring your feet, your legs together and, and just become a little ball of fear. Become a little ball of fear. It's okay. Become a little ball of fear. Let your body shake, whatever. Become that ball of fear. I don't feel it now, it's gone. It's gone because as soon as I come on here and do my job, I reached out to someone today who understands me to ask for some healing or for their common sense because they always calmed me. They're very wise and able to do that. You have to make sure that today you only speak to those people that get you, okay? because you're very vulnerable today. We are very, very vulnerable today. We are like little rabbits today that need to be cuddled and held. So that's what I wanna to do today. I wanna to hug you, I wanna hold you. Maybe yourself today. Stay in the moment and feel. And if the fear comes up, try not to project it on someone else who doesn't get it. 
I know it's hard and we're human. Yeah, you just can't convince people. If you can't convince them or wake them up, it's best just to tell them to leave you alone. That's what I did in the end. I said, I just want to be on my own. I just want to be with my tribe today, my 144,000. And you're all there and, I, and we're ringing each other and we're holding each other and we're channeling and we're finding that this is all going to be okay, guys. But the ego will put you into situations where if you can't cope with it, guys, please watch this or meditate, eat, drink water. Don't get too hungry, too angry, too lonely or too tired. <clears throat> Ring your bell today validation. God, I wish I lived in a place where there was one person that got me today. Don't you? When I'm talking to people that know that even their spouses they don't get, they don't get it. I wish, I wish my biggest wish is to have someone here today that knows what this is, that knows the truth. Because the people that I know, unfortunately, that they, they think that this is how it's going to play out. The way that what we saw yesterday, no. We have to see beyond. We have to understand this is tactics. Remember? Remember when Trump went into hospital with that hoax? Came out in two days, remember? Remember, impeach, impeach, impeach the whole election? the whole time he's been around. Remember, remember the Russian collision. Remember, remember, remember. This is an opportunity now to blow the whole thing to pieces. And that's what I'm going to hold on to. And I'm allowed to have my opinion, but I'm scared that I'm going to get cut off. Groups saying to me, you're not allowed to have your opinion because that's what's happening. That's what we saw last night. See, I grew up with the dogma and the dogma was that Israel was good and the Arabs were bad. And the dogma was that you go to war and you fight to protect yourself and your people. And that was it. There was no questioning anything. That was it. I, I did what I was told. I went in the army because I had no choice. Because if I didn't go in the army, I would have been arrested. And I did what I was told. And then I got out. Because I didn't want to live like that. Freedom is more important to me than life. Of course it is. Freedom is everything, guys. Everything. You are free. That the body can be enslaved, but the spirit can never be enslaved. You free spirits. And that's why... Today, I'm sitting like this, and people say, oh, look at her. What the hell's wrong with her? I'm sitting like this because I'm free, and I'm on here because I'm free, and I'm still free. I can go out there, and I can walk. It's cold, but I can, and I can get some fresh air as long as I wrap up warm. We're still free. And could it be that what we saw yesterday is all part of a game to keep our freedom. So nothing and no one can take that freedom away from us. Could it be? Could it be? I would give anything now to be living in a, some kind of um, village or <clears throat> the commune that I talk about is where you have your own space. You all live in your own houses, but we abide by our laws. There are no lockdowns. There is no. <coughs> we heal ourselves. You know, when I say we live together, we live together in a type of a village, but we still have our own homes and our space. A bit like a kibbutz. And I would give anything today to have that friend to come here to say to me, I get it. This is all part of the plan. Yeah, you're right, Lauren. Let's celebrate freedom. Let's celebrate that we're winning or that we've already won. 
but there is no one except the phone. And I've got a, a course that I go on about ascension at five o'clock. And I don't want it to be anything but ascension. Um, I don't want it to bring in any of this fear, fear, fear. I don't want to hear about what happened last night. I, I don't want to hear about how orange man bad and all that crap. All I want is ascension. And this is part of the ascension because the world is detoxifying the same way as each and every one of us is detoxifying. Each and every one of us is being brought to our knees, highlighting everything that needs to be highlighted. And maybe that's why I needed to come on here because I've got a job to do today. <laughs> My job is to help you to feel the fear as well. Feel it. I don't feel it now. Interesting. I don't feel scared. Fear makes me lash out. Fear makes me shout at people. Fear makes me lose my temper. Fear makes me push people away. I don't have a lot of control over the knee jerk reaction when I'm scared. I'm working on it. People think I'm so strong that I can do anything. They run away from me. They think that I want to hurt them. I love you guys. I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm just doing my best to get through the madness like everyone else. I'm a scared little girl inside that doesn't know if she'll see dad again because if there's a war, it's all coming up. I'm a scared, scared little girl that at seven years old was taken from the comfort of her home in Dublin to a war, to terrorism, to pedophilia lost all her safety and all her friends, her grandparents and everything. Chaos everywhere. And the minute the fear hits that little girl, confusion, fear, chaos, and she doesn't understand, she loses her temper very quickly. And she hurts others. And I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, but I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best and it hurts like hell to be so alone because that part of me can't be with anybody that isn't doing the job that we're doing because I'm so scared that if we don't stay together and we don't stay strong and do this together, we'll end up like the ancestors in Nazi Germany. I'm scared. I'm very, very scared. I'm not a bad person. I'm not evil. I don't want people to be scared of me. It's just a child inside me. A tiny little girl. How can you be scared of a tiny little girl? She needs hugs. She needs love. She needs compassion. Not to be thrown away and blocked. Because she's scared. She never had love when she was a child. She never had that when she was a child. And now when she shows herself, you will run away. Why do you all run away instead of hugging her? You know, all she needs is a hug, that's all. And the minute you hug her,
the minute you hug her, that's it. She's fine again, and you know it. I'm not that strong, powerful woman that can do anything all the time that you think I am. I don't want to hurt anybody. I just want to be held and hugged like everybody else. I just want to know it's going to be okay. That part of me, that child is so scared today, who, who is living back in the war, living back in the abuse, who is coming up through the ascension, didn't want to hurt anyone. Sometimes she's too strong for me. She's coming up and I'm doing my best. And those of you with hearts, surely you must understand that I'm doing my best. And I don't mean to hurt you. Or am I showing you that your little child is very scared too? So why won't you face your little child with me? Why don't we get together and face it together? Those of you that are scared like me, instead of running away from me, punishing my little child all the time. She just wants to be loved. That's all. I'm not angry with her at little Lauren anymore. I'm not angry with little Lauren anymore. I'm not. I love her. And I'm letting her do what she has to do, say, sing when she wants, cry when she wants. And today, I feel like her. I feel very lonely. It's just me and big Lauren, <laughs> big Lauren and little Lauren today. Big Lauren trying to analyze and figure stuff out. And little Lauren asking for hugs. Little Lauren trying to say I'm frightened. She's not angry today, she's frightened. I'm lonely. I'm being very honest here. I bear my soul here. As you know, it's all the awakening. I can only bear my soul. And people will say, this is the mind, this is the ego, this is the pain body. Yeah, I know. The past is gone. The future, the past is history. Future a mystery. The present a gift, unwrap it with glee. I know. But tell that to that part that's coming up now, which is full of fear. Tell it to that part. It just wants a hug today. But has no one to hug except herself. So if your little child is scared today, let it be. Could it be that that's why this has happened? To let, the spirit wants your little child to feel frightened today. What if, what if? Feel all that fear of your childhood, feel all that fear of what you went through in order to release it, this boil that needs to be lamps. can't deny it. Yes, you can meditate and pretend it's not there, but you have to feel it. How else are you going to heal it? Feel and heal, feel and heal. But this is the message now. I felt I needed to do this today. To say, I'm just Lauren sometimes. I'm just a star seed alien angel in a human body with years and years and lifetimes, like all of the rest of you, of ship. A lot of ship. And when I am backed into a corner like a little porcupine, I, I throw out my arrows, you know, I attack. Because that's all I learned when I was a child. My dad slept with a gun under his pillow. I learned to protect myself and I learned to attack. 
and I'm aware of it, the problem is I, I tend to catch it when I've already done, after I've done it, I temper, I say things, I lashed out at someone. When I was in the strength of the Queen of Swords, I hurt someone very badly. They just happened to ring me up in the middle of a talk about saving children's lives with Mark Steele had given me some information and I, I, I just couldn't deal with it. And I told them, don't you ever do that again. And I just lashed out at someone that I, all I've ever done with is shown them love and compassion and empathy for what they're going through. And I know people are going through hell at the moment. They've lost all their money, their businesses, their lives. I don't care anymore. You know, it's one day at a time. And so I'm going to say it. I'm, I, I lashed out because I was in so much fear and I, when Mark Steele gave me that information, I was in so much fear for you guys about what they can do to kids in schools. And this person has a child as well, that I completely ignored that other person's feelings and what they're going through. And I told them, don't you ever call me in the middle of a serious conversation about the children, as if to say that they weren't important, as if to say that their feelings were not important, which that person means everything to me. A close friend, means everything to me. And I've tried to apologize time and time again, because that's all I can do, because the human side of me doesn't know what else to do. And because of the way we're living, I apologize. I had a long conversation to my sister yesterday. I said to her, I could go tomorrow, you could go tomorrow. I want to know everything, let's clear the decks. And I tried to, and I got so far, and then I couldn't get any further, but we had a long conversation where I was helping her, reading for her and her daughters. She was accepting a lot of what I said, from, came from love. And I said, I just want to ask questions. That's all. Look guys, when it comes to the body, no one knows what's coming from one day to another. The spirit is eternal. When it comes to our lives and our person, what we are on this, whatever it is, no one knows. And so I'm clearing the decks. I'm clearing the decks and I'm saying everything I have to say. That day I was vulnerable and I was very scared because I didn't know what to do. I was just passing on information. And unfortunately the call could have cut off the communication I was trying to give about the children. <clears throat> and I felt it was really important. And I felt that when that call came in from this person to say to me, stop spewing all your vomit on me, which I was doing as well, personally, and they had every right to be angry because I had no empathy for what they were going through. None, none. So I cut them off and said, don't you ever ring me in the middle of a call like that. Because to me, the fear of what I found out as well was just like extra, extra, extra. There's only so much I can take. Remember, I'm on my own. I don't have anybody, okay? You gotta remember that. I can't just distract and go somewhere to a family or 
<clears throat> even this lockdown, um, the husband is with his parents and his brother and sister, and they had a birthday party last week for his dad's birthday. I didn't get invited because of this madness. Try to understand as well what's going on with me. Try to have some empathy for me too, and then maybe you'll forgive me. That's all I'm saying. And then I went with the peace offering and it was thrown in my face. A big peace offering. I've tried to do peace offerings with some people and they just... They, wouldn't, they don't accept it and when the ego that gift is not accepted, the ego. Again, I get scared and confused because it's not congruent. Let me put it this way. When you've got a friend and you've had a friend for like 10 years, yeah, you've been friends with someone for about 10 years, yeah? And then they behave in a non-congruent way. Like they don't come and visit you when you're in a wheelchair or whatever. It's just an example. I don't understand how to cope and I lash out because I get confused surely that is not a big enough sin to reject me completely and to turn against me and to forget about those 10 years that you had together I've got a friend who I forget his birthday once. We've been friends for a long time. I forgot his birthday. And he sent me a message that I don't want to see you anymore, talk to you. Um, come on. I never do that to anyone. My heart is wide open to all of you to talk. But I can talk today if you're batting for the other group, if you know what I mean. If you don't see beyond, I can't talk to you. But if I've upset you personally, and I'm coming with cap in hand, so to speak, I'm bearing my soul here because after yesterday, I don't know what's going to happen. Part of me does. The part of me that uh, is connected to spirit knows that this is happening for a reason and it's going to be okay. But the other part of me, the little child, the little seven-year-old is shitting herself thinking, this is the end, my friend, as Jim Morrison said, the end. And we're not coming out of it. Bye-bye humanity. Welcome to wars again. Did you see that Trump ended wars? Did you not see that? I left Israel to live a free human being. I don't want to live in a war again. You don't want to live in a war. Whatever happens, humans just know how to do that. And I lose my temper. So if I can't control my temper, and upset beings and hurt humans and destroy with that temper. How are we going to end wars? It starts with me and I am full of fear. If I don't stay in the moment. So those of you who I've hurt and I can't talk to or be around or hug or laugh with because I have to be here dealing on and off. Yeah, dealing on and off. I still need friends. I still need fun. I still need somewhere where I can distract with other people like me. Yes. I do not believe that we're meant to be on our own all the time. We're tribal. I 
I'm asking for people to see me, not just as Lauren that's up there on that pedestal. People call me, you're my fairy godmother, someone said to me. Yeah, I am, but I'm also a seven-year-old child somewhere, still working through it. That's what the ascension is. A seven-year-old little frightened little girl that was put through things that she should never have been put through, but she had to because she's an angel. One of the 144,000. It's part of the spiritual journey. I get it. And how can you love as much as I do? How can you love the vulnerable and want to do everything for them? And how can you see beyond if you haven't been put through that kind of stuff? You can't. So that part of me gets it. That's why I came on here today to show you everything, so to speak. And when I watch this tonight, I will watch me exposing myself. It's all off. Just so you can. Whoever may feel something from this and may feel some compassion for me beyond the pain that I inflicted on them because I could not understand what they are going through. But I have offered cups of reconciliation time and time again, and gifts from here. Because I realize I make mistakes and I tried. And as I say, the little child doesn't understand if you don't accept her gift she gets confused again. So I'm living with a seven-year-old and she's not a brat today. She's not an angry, raging brat. She's frightened. And so are you. So admit your, your fear. What was that? Something went across the screen. Jesus, what was that? There's no flies or anything here. I don't know what that is. Did you see that? I'll leave it in. That's what I'm talking about. Protect yourself, guys. Protect yourself. I protect this with the violet flame, with the love of the angels. Come violet flame and blaze and blaze and blaze. Come violet flame and raise and raise and raise. The earth and all, the earth and all. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity God desires. You are the being of violet fire. You are the purity God desires. Violet flame come forth. I need to go and get some fresh air. And then I've got my course of five. Pray for me that all it is is ascension and being in the moment. That's it. Being in the moment today, I wore the red because it's bright and it's vibrant and it's fun. And I've got life. Believe me, I don't feel like it. <laughs> I don't want to sing today. I want to cry and I want to be, that part of me needs to cry and be scared today. And that's a good thing. So if you need to cry and be scared today, I hope this helps you. I hope that if you watch this, it touches your heart. Like Sharon says in Heartbreak, if you read this letter, it will melt your heart. You'll feel the way I feel, I hope. Please don't take your loving heart away from me for a moment of stupidity. Won't you tell me what I have to do to mend your heart? Please don't take your loving arms away from me for a moment. We had heaven. If you tell me what I'm supposed to do, then maybe I can make it up to you somehow. That's encounters. That's the shock of the ego when someone just cuts you off. Whoever's watching this can see beyond. I'm sorry. 
The seven-year-old is sorry. She needs to be loved. That's all I can say. Love her and help me heal her, please. I love you. I love your seven-year-old, your 10-year-old, your 12-year-old, your little child. Love your inner child today. What does that inner child want to do today? Nothing. She just wants to be here channeling through me, saying I'm scared. Where's daddy? Why, am, why is daddy not home? Why, what are those noises, mummy? I wanna go home. I wanna go home. I wanna go back to Dublin. Please take me back to the safety. That's what the seven-year-old is saying. I want grandpa, I want grandma, I want my friends. I want the garden, I want the fairies in the garden. I want the roses. I don't wanna be here in wars and terrorism and fear and noise and a strange language. And, but I, I don't wanna be here. Take me home, take me home, take me home. That's all she wants is to go home. That's all she ever wanted was to go home. And to go home is peace. It's Dublin. Just to go home. I don't care what people think when they watch this. As long as it helps you to feel what you're feeling today. Total confusion, fear, Loneliness, abandonment, everything possible death of the body, because there is no other death. And as I say, Course in Miracles says, go within. And when I go within, there she is. I want to go home. That's all she said to mom and dad, I want to go home. And now, once did they say we can't go home not once they said we'll see they'll say when you're older when you finish school when your sister finishes school and it went on and on and on i want to go home i want to go home can you imagine this little nagging little child this beautiful little girl if she was loved if she had been my child i would have held her to my heart and i would have said to her Sweetheart, I love you. We can't go back. We haven't got the money. You have to try to settle here. Mummy loves you. Daddy loves you. Let's play a game together. Something. Something. Let's play a game together. What would you do with a seven-year-old? I keep saying, I want to go home. I want to go home. I want to go home. If you were their parent, you'd sit with them and you'd hold them and you'd say the truth. I'm really sorry, sweetheart, we can't go home. We don't have any money. We've burnt our bridges. We have to stay now. There's nothing we can do, sweetheart. Wouldn't that have been easier for her? Wouldn't that have been easier? If you have a seven-year-old child or a little child that is crying, I want to go home, mom. Or I'm not happy, mom. Or I'm scared. That's what you need to do. Tell them the truth. Look them in the eye and say, but I love you. I love you. And you will not be hurt because mommy loves you. Mommy loves you so much. But I'm sorry, sweetheart. This is now your home. This is your home. Let's go and pick some flowers. Let's go to the beach and show you the beauty of Israel. Let's find you a friend. But no, my mom, I just got shouted at and told lies and more lies. Why do you think that today is so hard? The uncertainty of, I don't know because that's how I grew up with I don't know. <laughs> and the ego is bringing it all up, the ascension. 
I don't know. Confusion and lack of certainty. I don't know. This personality, this Lauren doesn't know anything. I don't know. And it's okay to not know. So today you have to live in, I don't know. But if you're in the moment, you can live in, I don't know. You can live in uncertainty. If you're in the moment, there is no future and there is no past. And that seven-year-old is only in my head, in my imagination, in my thoughts. But this has gone on a bit too long. I hope you watch it, guys. And maybe tomorrow I will talk about what home means when I said I want to go home. And how can we be at home now, in the moment? Isn't that the answer? I love you. Bye. Please subscribe, share, and like. If you want to come on here, moving on TV1 at gmail.com. Do your best to still try to achieve. Do something today if you can, set a goal and, and stay in hope. Like my name, so we can get the glory. Welcome to Moving On TV and The Awakening. Someone told me to sing to them something today, which represents what we're going through and connects to a lot of what's happening. And uh, so it goes a bit like this. <laughs> when the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with